Hi guys, Judy Fine here. If you're an aspiring singer and you don't play an instrument and you're not sure how to get from your book of lyrics to actual songs, I want to help you with that. So today I'm going to show you how you can find and download a beat online and then I'm going to show you how you can analyze the music of that beat so that you can write lyrics that fit the structure of it. And then I'm going to show you how I record my vocals to that music using Adobe Audition, which just happens to be the program that I have. So if you're an aspiring songwriter and you're not quite sure how to move from lyrics on a piece of paper to an actual song, watch this video. Okay, so before I get into the meat of this video, I just want to say if you like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, ring the bell so you get notifications. All those things help me out a lot and I appreciate your support in that way. So before I get into the three steps that I outlined, I just want to show you what gear, what equipment I use and I'll be using for this video. So you have to have some kind of recording program or a recording device. I'm going to be using Adobe Audition and then I use, this is my interface, it's a Focusrite Scarlett 2. So it has XLR inputs, if you can see that. I use that because I just have regular stage mics. Oh, there it is. So I can plug a stage mic right into this. It goes into my computer via USB, and then I can record into my recording software. Now you can find a, a microphone that is a USB microphone, goes right into your computer, do some research, read reviews. I don't have a lot of experience with those microphones, so I'm not gonna give you any advice on that because it, it would not be good advice. It would not be tested advice. So you need a microphone, you need some kind of interface or some way to connect the microphone to your computer and you need a recording program. Now, even if you don't have those things, you could benefit from practicing your songwriting skills using beats. You can play the beats and sing along. You can play the beat and sing along and record yourself live. How good that recording will be will depend on what you're recording on and what room you're in and all that. So next up, I'm gonna show you uh, one of the websites that I download beats from and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so right now I'm using the website sfrbeats.com. I don't have any affiliation with them. I don't get any kickback. So the idea is I'm going to pick a beat that I feel I can create lyrics to go with. I don't have any specific lyrics in mind right now. Now I just want to show you the difference between purchasing the beat exclusively and leasing. So if you want this, let's say we wanted Crystal Jungle. Let's listen to Crystal Jungle. Now, you can have this beat exclusive to you, meaning nobody else can purchase and download this beat if you pay 238 bucks for it. Whereas Uprising here, okay, that's pretty cool too. So if I wanted to, I could lease Uprising for just $23. So it's a lot less expensive, but other people can also download this beat. I would say in the beginning, until you really get your songwriting chops going, start with a lease. Another thing I just want to point out right here is that you can download a lo-fi um, version of the beats to play around with to see if it's something that you want to actually pay for. Don't use the lo-fi in any final product. Don't create something and put it on YouTube or whatever. Um, not only is that against the rules, but we don't want to take advantage of people that we're using the benefits of, the, of their skills. Right? We want to reward each other and lift each other up. So don't do free stuff that you're not supposed to do. Okay, so I went ahead and chose a beat um, off camera just to not bore you too much as I look through it. I'm sure you can figure out how to browse through different beats. The chord progression pretty much repeats throughout, but layers are added at certain points to make you feel clearly like it's a new section. So I'll show you what I mean. It's got this intro. Kind of builds the tension nicely. And then I would call this, you know, verse one. And I'm going to fast forward so it repeats that again, what I just called verse one. And you'll see in a second that it's going to do the same chord progression again, but it's going to add other layers that make it clear it's a different section. So listen here.
So that is clearly a different section, and to me it sounds like it would be the chorus. And then that repeats again. So I'm going to fast forward to the next verse. So it comes down again the way it was in the beginning, and now it feels like we're at another verse. And it does the other section again. It goes without those additional parts, and now we feel like we're at the chorus again. I'm going to fast forward again to here. Now this feels like an instrumental solo or something you would call the bridge. I can add some vocals there too. I wouldn't add too many because it's got a, a lead line going on instrumentally. And then when it comes back to the fall music, it's repeating the section that I'm considering the chorus. So to summarize the structure of the song based on this music, we have a four measure intro, we have an eight measure verse one, an eight measure chorus, eight measure verse two, eight measure chorus two, an eight measure bridge with an instrumental solo, and then a 12 me measure chorus, or you can call it a regular eight measure chorus with sort of a four, um, an opportunity for ad-libbing for four more measures, and then there's a musical outro. If you don't understand what I'm talking about when I say verse, chorus, bridge, you don't know what a pre-chorus is, all those things, you should definitely go to onlinewithjudyfine.com. I'll put a link in the description and check out the Write Better Lyrics workbook. I'm going to go ahead and purchase this. Um, here we go. So $21 it's going to cost. I'm going to go ahead and purchase that without showing you my <laughs> secure payment information. And then um, we will work on it. Okay, so I took some time to write some lyrics and then I recorded them. I do not at all recommend that you write lyrics in like 20 minutes and then record your first uh, run through of singing it and then call it done. Your first draft is never, ever your final draft. It never should be. You work on some lyrics, you come back another day, you see how you feel about them, you Google um, rhyming dictionary, and you see if you can improve some of your vocabulary choices. If you notice that you're frequently rhyming love with glove and skies above, find new words, okay? Try not to be cliche, but you can't do that all in one day. Your first day should just be getting your initial idea out. So the most important thing I want to emphasize here is when you're writing lyrics, your verses have to be different than your choruses or your bridge or your pre-chorus. So especially using a beat like this because the entire song is the same chord progression over and over again. So if your lyrics are, um, you have a lot of words moving quickly, then maybe in your chorus you, you use less words and move more slowly. Or if your um, verse is a lower part of your range, then your chorus maybe should be mostly in a higher part of your range or something like that. It has to be clear to the listener. These words are a verse, these words are a chorus. Okay, I'm in Adobe Audition right now. So here is the beat called Chance. Here I recorded the verses on a separate track from the choruses. And I did that in case I want to put a different kind of effect on the chorus, that's always a good idea. Let me just show you really quickly how I got this beat in. So I downloaded it, and then you just go to Import, File, and then you select it, and then you come to one of these, one of these tracks, you right click, and you insert, and it'll show up here, SFR Beats, Champs. That's how I got that there. Okay, so I'm not gonna get specifically into an audition tutorial because you might be using something else. But in a general sense, you need to have a track for vocals. I have two tracks for vocals here. I put the beat on one of the guitar tracks. And you can kind of see in here, um, I have to do this again because I just opened it, but here's my Scarlet. So whatever you're using as your input should show up here if it's active. And then you'll be able to choose that. And then you activate this track for recording by hitting that, that R there. And then whenever you hit this record button down here, it's gonna record whatever's on that track. So make sure you turn this off if you're gonna record on a different track. And then you have options for um, putting effects on things. And I would recommend just starting with pre presets. 
there's a little bit of a learning curve and you should watch YouTube videos to find out more because there's a YouTube video to tell you how to do everything. So I'm going to end this video with, I guess we'll call it my final product here. It's a great starting place if you want to find musicians to play with you, if you want to find musicians who can add other lines, if you want to add other musical lines. Um, there's so many things you can do with this. You can make a YouTube video. But the really cool thing about Beats, or another cool thing about Beats, is that it's a great way to test out your songwriting skills because it gives you parameters within which you can practice your skills. And it's fun, and I encourage you to, to try it. Pay attention to my version of this song now. I, I guess it's called Night and Day, or Working Night and Day, I don't know. But pay attention to how the verses are different from the choruses, all right? And I'll see you next time. Please tell me why I never see you